Sundell House is a six-story wood frame multifamily rental building. It has one level of underground parking and is 123,000 square feet. We have 135 units ranging from studios to four bedrooms. The building is uh, dedicated towards UBC faculty and staff rental housing. UBC's priorities for sustainability are building sustainable communities. The Green Building Action Plan has been developed to work on UBC's priorities. It's a holistic plan that looks at building design in eight different component areas. Currently, we're keeping REAP aligned at step two of the step code. Mundell House, however, was designed prior to step code coming into common place usage. So the project was designed to an energy target that was required by REAP at that time, and it did not require an air tightness test. Building and Safety Standards Branch sets and administers the BC Building Code and the BC Energy Step Code. We work to define energy efficiency requirements within the BC Energy Step Code and having a net zero energy ready code by 2032. Local governments that choose to adopt the BC Energy Step Code, air tightness testing is a regulatory requirement for uh, residential and non-residential construction projects. Energy modeling is a requirement under the BC Energy Step Code for all steps from step one to four for part three buildings and is required to verify the design and as constructed performance with regards to energy utilization and energy demand intensities. Air tightness testing has a profound impact on the design of a project. So the more aggressive we're looking at building performance targets to be, the more airtight the actual envelope has to then become. The role of a building envelope consultant in the air leakage testing process is to review those mock-ups on site with the team and really provide guidance on the materials that are being used, how they're being used, in what sequence they're being used, and then provide periodic reviews throughout the construction process. It's very important that the construction manager or um, general contractor be involved very early and we can then provide advice on pre-construction as well as with cost implications. The typical sequencing for air tightness testing starts off with the review of the architectural drawings. From there we develop a test plan that we provide to the developer and that should be done the sooner the better. A week prior to the actual test date, we recommend doing a walkthrough with the developer to ensure that they are familiar with what needs to be done in order to prepare the building for the air tightness testing. So we're gonna walk through the building and I'm gonna point out in, in the suites and in the common areas, the different things that we need to mask off, like um, HRV grills, uh, OTRs, maybe the lint traps. We'll talk about filling the plumbing traps with water. That when they're taping off the other areas, they can just run all the sinks for 30 seconds minimum, tubs, showers, and make sure they're full. Uh, yeah, we got to prop open all the suite entry doors and all the interior doors so that we ensure that the whole building gets pressurized to identify deficiencies. We do have the window repair tech scheduled the week of the test in the event that we have uh, unforeseen circumstance. Um, on other projects, if you know you're doing air tightness testing early in the, in the construction phase, you can seal up all the vents on the outside like this or other methods. Um, and if you, see, if you seal all the vents on the outside, then you don't have to seal up the vents on the inside and this will be an easier uh, process to prep your building. We had a team of two or three individuals that would prep the entire site over a number of days. So each person would be responsible for a particular item of sealing up that unit. Then the superintendent will go through and review. And after that, the test date, we fire up the fans, we walk through the building and ensure that the building is 
in fact, test ready. Then we perform the test. Now that the building's prepped, here we are on test day on a Saturday. Uh, there's no work scheduled. First step is to set the blower doors up in the main entrance. We've got lots of power running from the suites. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our fans, get it up to pressure, and then take a walk about of the building and um, do some diagnosis and see if there's any areas of significant air leakage that we can determine before we actually run uh, the test. Good, simple diagnostic tool for finding air leaks is uh, smoke pencils. Okay, so here you got, you got a window that's closed, but it's not latched. So you can see when you use your smoke pencil around the window, you can immediately see the air leakage. We've taped up the grills on the inside, all the grills and the microwave and the vents. However, you can see we're still getting some air pulling in through the intakes. Um, and that's getting pulled in either through the HRV unit itself or the ductwork connecting the intake uh, and the HRVs. Uh, here I've got my gauges and my fans. There it is. That's the number we're looking for. The testing methodologies and standards that are required under the BC Energy Step Code, both tests, it requires a pressure differential of 75 pascals to be applied across the building envelope to meet the testing requirements. Yeah, on part three buildings, larger buildings, we the metric we use in the step code is liters per second per meter square. But uh, most people are more familiar with the ACH50 number. That's the single family home number that um, people test to. We got a 0 0.97 ACH50. And to put that a little bit in perspective, a passive house has to achieve 0 0.6 ACH50, so we're quite good. In the following days, we provide a written test report to the developer. For reporting the air leakage test results, an energy report is required prior to occupancy. Another method is via the new Energy Design Report tool, which is an Excel-based tool that allows uh, designers and energy modelers to report the inputs and outputs of the energy model to help to demonstrate code compliance. So there are many benefits to living in an airtight building. One of them is reduced operational costs as a result of the um, increased energy efficiency of the building. And this also plays into the reduction of greenhouse gases. There's a healthier indoor environment as well too as a result of less airborne contaminants coming in through the actual building enclosure. It's got less noise penetrating into the building. It's easier to heat uh, and cool uh, and you're not losing that energy from the space. So it, it's, it's going to feel more comfortable. Green buildings, certainly, and energy efficient buildings. I think that people really look for that and um, want to live in a green building. UBC is looking for buildings that really give back and not just do less harm. So it's important for us to understand the economics and the sustainability features of, of each building and how that's going to help improve the quality of life for our renters and also the quality of life of our buildings as well. Air leakage testing is to put some obligation to both the design team and the construction team to build a, an airtight building and a, a, a better building.